I'm sick of all your requests on the internet for this car, so finally, it's here. The sixth generation Camaro SS with one LE package. We spoke to some of the engineers that worked on this car, and we drove this thing monkey style around Autobahn Country Club. And this video is possible due to a very generous viewer and owner, Mike, and of course, the title sponsor, the Scholars from Auto Tempest. So let's talk about what this car is from an exterior perspective. They made the SS1 LE from 2017 all the way up to 2024. And there were three different front fascias. There was the original fascia, sold from 17 to 18. Then they made it tremendously ugly for 2019 alone. Then they sort of fixed it for 2020 to when they stopped selling this in 2024. You get unique aero front and rear for the 1LE package. You get an active exhaust as standard. You get a satin black hood and some other interior features, which we're gonna talk about next. You get Recaro seats as standard. You get an Alcantara steering wheel and an Alcantara shift lever. You also get the heads-up display as standard with the 1LE package. The interior space, however, is traditional 6th gen Camaro, which means you can't see anything. This definitely is inspired by a Second World War bunker. You have very small front windows, high side sills. However, if you're coming from a car with limited visibility, like a C8 or C7 Corvette or a Supra, you'll probably feel right at home. And honestly, you get used to it relatively quickly. These Recaro seats are also exceptional. When you move up to the 2SS package, they become heated, cooled, and you get a heated steering wheel. When it comes to the rest of the interior space, it's sort of the con of this car. While there is a fairly large trunk, the opening is incredibly small. Yes, you can fold down the rear seats, which means much like the owner Mike of this car, you can fit a full set of tires in the trunk but the interior space is fairly compromised. You have minimal door storage. You have nowhere to put a full-size bottle. The armrest area is really, really tiny. And honestly, this interior space is not great from a livability perspective. However, thankfully, all the controls and core touch points are physical, easy to use, and actually relatively nice feeling. The pedal box is great. Shifter location is good. I do love these knurled HVAC controls and really the interior space, particularly with the later head units found in this car from like 20 and later, is easy to use. You have wireless Apple CarPlay, you have Android Auto, the HVAC simple. Really, this car is very simple to use and you have a full set of auxiliary gauges in the gauge cluster, which means you can see oil temp, water temp, and all the things you need for track use. You also can get the optional PDR, and with a 2SS package, you get the Bose audio system, which is welcome because this 1SS base audio system is not great, but you can just listen to the V8 instead. So that, let's go ahead into the shop. I believe in the church of V8, but before we talk about the shop segment of this vehicle, let's talk about price. You beat me up on this all the time. I make you drive all these expensive Porsches. You're like, what about a car for the common man or the somewhat common man in this vehicle's case? Well, that brings us to our title sponsor because this is technically a package, not a trim level. This is a Camaro SS. You can also get this as a 2SS, which is a higher interior trim, but it is a vehicle with the 1LE package which you can't sort for normally on a website. So that's where we bring in Auto Tempest. It's a search aggregate website that allows you to sort by keyword, which makes it easier to find vehicles like this thing. Or you can type in the keyword Xtronic or Linear Tronic <laughs> if you're really looking for the ultimate in transmission performance check. Oh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm sorry, Mark. This does not come with the legendary CPT. Mm. So when it comes to prices, as you can see on the website, a 1SS car, this car was sold between 2017 and 2024. You can get them for mid to high 30s. A really low mileage 1SS is low 40s, and the 2SS can be had for high 30s all the way up to $50,000, which gives us a pretty good affordability spectrum. It's priced right along with things like a Civic Type R, a GR Corolla, and a Golf R. And let me tell you, this thing blows those cars out of the water when it comes to track performance. I don't think so, but we'll find <laughs> out. <laughs> all right, let's talk about what this car is. And when you look at this thing, the first thing you're struck by, particularly after you get underneath something like a Mustang, is how this actually looks about a thousand percent more sophisticated. Yeah, the Mustang looks like, you know, uh, an economy B-segment car. When you're looking at material choice and layout, everything, this looks like a luxury car underneath. It's because it shares essentially a luxury car architecture. This is the Alpha platform, which was introduced obviously in the CTS and ATS, and then used on this Camaro, the sixth gen Camaro, versus the outgoing Camaro. It lost 200 pounds, it uses more high strength steel, it has better general kinematics, and this is built in the same plant, or was built in the same plant in Michigan as the CT5 and CT4, thus making this a true luxury car architecture. 
is the McPherson strut front, multi-link rear, you have an aluminum front subframe, aluminum links, aluminum control arms, aluminum knuckles. It is a very sophisticated, like, looking suspension. The multi-link in the back is largely sealed, but so are most cars, regardless of price point. And they're, they do allow some level of alignment capability, which is very rare in strut cars, and GM does factor that in in the owner's manual. It allows you to configure your car for track duties. What is the 1LE package for the SS? Let's talk about drivetrain first. You get a trans cooler, you get a diff cooler, you get an engine oil cooler, real heat exchangers, which on this price point of car is very rare. Gets the 1LT 6.2 liter pushrod V8. I spent some time talking to one of the chief powertrain engineers. I'm sure you know who I'm talking about at this point. It makes 455 horsepower, 455 foot pounds of torque. Versus the LS3, this is now a DI engine or direct injected. They went to DI for two reasons. They could increase the compression ratio, which increases horsepower and torque and efficiency. And of course, for emissions reasons, this is a pretty stout engine. It is a wet sump versus a dry sump. And things like performance Corvettes, like my Grand Sport, a Z06, you get a dry sump system, all the Camaros. They all share, all the V8 Camaros, all share the same oil pan. So this is the same pan, a wet sump setup used in the ZL1 1LE, ZL1 the regular SS and this. It has 10 quarts of oil capacity and it was built around trying to maintain 1.2 Gs of lateral force. So there's a very good setup oil pan for baffling and trays to make sure this thing doesn't oil starve out. It's a lot of protection built in place as well. They call it the oyster system essentially. It's looking at oil temps and Gs to make sure that once you cross the threshold like we experienced on track, mm -hmm. it starts to cut timing and protect the engine. While there have been some supplier-based issues in GM words around the oil pumps, one of the things people talk about on the internet is why were there so many oil pump revisions for a couple reasons. One, they had to change suppliers due to some of the quality control issues. The second is there was a small revision, not for reliability, but to reduce NVH out of the oil pump. You get two different gearboxes. The early 1LEs only came with a six-speed manual. It's a Tremec, it has auto rev match. It is very, very good. In 2019, they gave it, or they paired the 1LE as an option to the 10-speed automatic. It's quick shifting, but I wouldn't pick it. It puts its power down through a ELSD. We've talked about it a lot. It has PTM modes. It can unslip and slip the clutch and vary that force based upon what drive mode it's in. It has a more aggressive gear ratio. I think it's a 373 in the back. It's a very, very good system. Chassis. This has the FE4 suspension package. It is essentially the same suspension package found on the ZL1. It means it has MR dampers as standard. They are the, well, I guess now previous generation BWI dampers. They have different tuning as on the ZL1 due to the different weight and horsepower. And they get recaled based upon if you have an automatic or a manual 1LE. The, the automatics have a little bit different drive characteristics. The spring rates in the front are identical to what you find in the ZL1, but in the rear they are higher than the ZL1. They have the same sway bars and they get different control arms in the regular SS's and different bushings. The cool thing about this car is again, it is day one track capable. The other thing is braking. You get six pistons in front, four pistons in rear. They are Brembo's. This is a heavy car as you can see, it's around 3,700 inch pounds. That's one of the sort of the weak points of this vehicle is you do quickly overwhelm the brakes with weight and fluid. I recommend you swap to something like our counter space garage pads. You also get very, very wide tires. They're 20 by 10 in the front, 20 by 11 in the rear. Another sort of interesting point about this car is it is hard on tires. Mm. Um, the owner of this swapped when he autocrosses and tracks to a 19 setup with RE71 RS as one of our favorite track tires and we gave him a set of Potenza Sports. Pass that though, Mark. Is there anything you want to ask me about my GM mobile? Well, I will say that one of their goals in terms of setting this car up was that you could absolutely drive flat out with the way they tune the suspension and the level of grip in the tire and all of those things are working together. So unlike a car like the Supra where you go out and you're chasing the rear end, it feels like it wants to rotate, but you're kind of having to manage that. This car, it's supposed to be about stability in the way that they set it up so you can go out to track and drive it hard. And that's one of the things that I'll be curious to see if that's true when we get out there, Jack. You hear that in the distance, Mark? What's the that? sound of V8?
European handling my, my Chevrolet Celebrity Euro Sport wagon. <laughs> it's too conservative, Mark. <laughs> It's been a while. We were talking about driving this thing about 17 years ago. And uh, let me tell you, it does not disappoint in the least. <sighs> Let's walk through why it's great. <laughs> <laughs> That's one reason it's great. The other reason is this engine, V8. Long gears. First gear is 50, seconds 80, thirds over 100 miles an hour. But when you're out here on the track, it does exactly what you want it to do. Make V8 noises, deliver predictable power. Yes, it's over 100 degrees, so some of the timing, the finer details yeah, are getting sure. pulled in this temperature. But, I mean, you can get a V8 that makes over 450 horsepower for like in the mid-30s. What's not to love, Mark? Uh, the only thing this, I know we talked about, the only thing you can compare this to is like the modern Supra. And uh, one of the things I like about this car is the front end, at least in steering feel, there's more going on here. <laughs> yeah, it's got great steering. You have V8. <laughs> And it steers with the rear, but not excessively no. like the Supra. Like where that car feels like it wants to loop itself because of the, where the rear suspension is, this car feels really natural. Braking's pretty natural too. I mean, you have really, really good modern steering in this yeah, car. It, this car feels so totally solid. I mean, this is like the used car, used sports car uh, value of the decade. Um, it is so engaging to drive, but the negative part is even, you know, this is really stock. You feel it right away. Um, the front gives up very quick, even with an insane front camber. You run the front tires off, driving it hard, and the brakes feel feeble, and yes. you get a soft pedal right away. So it's it's one of those cars, you have to manage the weight, but... Uh, the balance is very, very neutral, though. No, it is. It's, it's an incredibly direct, really natural-feeling driver's car. Um, to your, to your exa example right there, that's what we're talking about. The front just gives up really yep. quick. Uh, clearly, it's tire-dependent and driving style. Temperature, yeah. yeah Temperature-dependent. Sure. The one thing that's you know, for me, I look at this car and I see there's something that really bothers me that they gave, they kind of gave up on this car, right? This is this car is so special, and I think the engineers, the, a brand like this, needs a car like the Camaro around to keep the engineers excited about yeah, working. Yeah, and having affordable, not you know, seventy thousand dollars sports car that you can do this in. Yeah, this is the everyman like muscle car sports car. It's not really a muscle car. To me, a Challenger is a muscle car. Yeah. This is a sports car. This this car is like a generation away of like figuring out the refinement of the interior and some of these finer details. Um, I, I just wish that they would have kept it going and made it better. It reminds me of the NSX thing. You know, like they killed the NSX too soon before they sorted everything out. This car just needs a little bit more. Yeah, but the latest MR dampers even further give it that breadth of capability that it already has. Um, a little more horsepower yeah, would be yeah. great. How does this compare, though, to the Dark Horse, which is probably the most modern, mind you, double the price? Well, the Dark say. Horse is faster. You feel it right away. The engine makes more power. It, it, it just is a more capable car in the braking part. But that car is still like all the Mustangs. Feels like you're sitting on top of it. There's this... It's good, good body control, but there's so much body movement in it that this car feels lighter, even though I know it's not particularly lighter. I think it's on a better platform. The steering, the directness, the way the rear end communicates to you, it's a more fun car. You can go flat out in it. Um, and it just, again, like I think this is the better car. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that, that's, that's a good job. <laughs> well, uh, I guess uh, let's just leave it at that. Right? The Apes! Dude, this car is fucking awesome! Uh, yeah, that's how they killed it. <laughs> Final thoughts on the Camaro SS with the 1LE package. Before we talk about the car, we have some people to thank, like the owner of this vehicle, Mike. The GMPR team, people like Trevor and Shad and everyone else there, been great to work with. They definitely prioritize technical information. Along with all the engineers, they bothered with all my technical questions. And of course, the sponsor of this video, Auto Tempest. Auto Tempest is a search engine run by genuine enthusiasts. The great thing about the search engine is it allows you to sort by keyword, by region, and it filters through all the available car listings in your area. It makes vehicles like this Camaro SS 
with one LE package, easier to find. And of course, we bought a car with Auto Tempest, a Nissan Murano Cross Cabriolet. And also thanks to Bridgestone, our title sponsor for providing us technical support and tires. And of course, Autobahn Country Club for giving us a home to make videos like this. So if you wanna become a better driver, do a track day, become a member, please hit them up. So what do I think about the car? Well, very clearly based upon the video, I love this thing. I think it has great dynamics. The inputs are good. It's got a V8. It's a very balanced car. You can either drive it around the front or the rear, depending on your driving style. And even by today's standards, it's very quick. With me driving in 100 degree weather on old tires, I ran a 135.5, which is faster than a modern Nismo Z with Britt Casey driving on RE71 RS tires, which are about the stickiest tire you can buy in much more favorable ambient conditions. Honestly, this is better to drive than a modern S650 Mustang GT with performance pack. That's how good this car is from you know, behind the wheel. What are its cons? Well, other than the fact that GM killed it, I'm gonna talk about that more in a second. It's the interior usability. The trunk is a bit too small. The back seats are essentially useless. There's nowhere to put anything. And it's got poor visibility. And that's really the issue of this car. And by modern standards, due to the fact that everything is so expensive, people expect a lot when it comes to daily usability in an affordable vehicle. So I'm hoping genuinely that GM builds another generation of Camaro. I think it would be good for the engineers, a morale booster, and from customers as well. This is a great car and they don't need to do a lot to update it. Past that though, I absolutely love this thing. I will be buying one. So with that, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon. <laughs>